This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. We have team coverage this morning because we are expecting some very hot temperatures this week. We have Netta Ronpour with the latest on a flex alert in effect. But first, let's get to Heather Myers with the latest on this hot forecast here to start the week out, Heather. Yeah, good morning to you, and I do want to let you know that we are under that excessive heat warning from the inland valleys all the way out to the desert, not just for today, but friends, this lasts until 10 o'clock Thursday night, and I really wouldn't be surprised if it gets extended into next weekend. There is no cool down in our forecast, so hang in there. We could see temperatures in our local desert top 115 degrees today, well into the 90s for most of the inland valley areas. So again, that excessive heat warning in place until 10 o'clock Thursday night. We'll talk about here in just a moment what we can expect as far as the forecast is concerned for the rest of the week. But let's quickly check on some numbers as we get into today. 80s at the beaches, 95 degrees inland, 98 in our local mountains, 115 as I mentioned today in our local desert. What do you do? How do you beat the heat when we are dealing with power outages? Let's check in with our Netta Ronpour and find out from sdg &E this morning. Netta. Yeah, good morning. So the goal, of course, is to prevent these rolling power outages. And Cal ISO says you can all do your part by conserving electricity. They want us all to uh, try to do our best to conserve what we can, especially during the peak hours of 3 to 10. And hopefully they say that will prevent them from having to do these rotating outages. They occur because there's just so much use on the electrical grid all across the state. Take a listen now to an SDG and a SDG and EF official explain why the demand is so high. Given the, the recent temperatures and the hot weather and mixed with people staying at home more with the COVID pandemic, I think energy usage is higher than usual. And there are some consequences to that. Yeah, and those consequences would be the rotating outages. Now, yesterday around 2.30 in the afternoon, Cal ISO, that's the California Independent System Operator, said the electrical grid status showed demand statewide over 40,000 megawatts. The total capacity is over 50,000 megawatts. So the closer we get to that, the more they'll have to encourage these utility companies to shut down the power for some communities. That's why they're encouraging everyone to conserve energy as best as possible to prevent these outages outages throughout the duration of this heat wave. Of course, for a lot of people, especially inland, when AC gets shut off, it can be very uncomfortable because of the severity of these hot conditions. It's possible, though, that those who were affected on Friday and Saturday with outages could be impacted again. Their goal is to not impact the same communities twice. At this point, they do say many of members of the North County, up to 17,000 people on Saturday were impacted. Now, communities in high fire threat districts are excluded from any rotating outages as certain critical facilities are as well, like hospitals, police and fire stations. Now they did do send out alerts on upcoming outages in real time through sdg and &E's Twitter page and also their online news center. We have links to all of that on their website. They're trying to give people a heads up when those outages are coming. Here's the best advice from Cal ISO. Now between 3 and 10 p.m. during this flex alert, you are urged to set your AC to 78 degrees. Try not to use any major appliances. That means Means doing laundry, washing those dishes in the dishwasher. Also turn off unnecessary lights, unplug unused electrical devices, and close your blinds and your drapes and use fans when possible. That'll hopefully keep some of the heat out of your house. Even during the morning hours, there's a lot you can do right now. They're saying charge your phones, your laptops right now, and then unplug them later in the afternoon. Also set your thermostat to 72 degrees to pre-cool your home and then turn it back up later this afternoon during the peak heat of the day, but that's also the peak of the electrical use as well. Again, that flex alert is set for the next three days, so it's going to last until Wednesday. But of course, as this heat goes on, you'll likely see more of this being announced. We're live at SDG and &E. we'll send it back to you. Netta, thank you. And with more people forced to work from home during the heat wave, supplies are just flying off the shelves. Portable air conditioners, AC units, canopies for those backyard barbecues that you might want to have at home weather stripping, insulation. Yeah, this Lowe's store in Burbank was completely sold out of those portable air conditioning units over the weekend. Box fans also in short supply. Shoppers say they usually get a break from the heat when they're at work. But now that home has also become the office, 
it's time for a new setup. Got to stay cool while you're working, right? Well, if you don't have air conditioning and you need to escape the heat, some county cool zones will be open today through Friday from noon to 5 p.m. Locations on your screen here. Take a look. Locations include Fallbrook, Borrego Springs, Alpine, Lakeside, Portrero, Santa Isabel, Ramona, Spring Valley, and Valley Center. By the way, your temperature will be taken on your way in, and you will have to wear a mask when you're inside. And today marks a big step in the push to redevelop the Mission Valley Stadium site. San Diego State University is breaking ground on its campus expansion, which includes a new stadium. News 8's Chris Groh is live at SDCCU Stadium with a closer look at a plan that's been years in the making. Good morning, Chris. This groundbreaking is going to look a little different, just like everything else, like you've been saying. Hey, good morning. It is. In fact, it's going to be virtual and there won't be the crowds or the fanfare that you probably expect at a pretty significant groundbreaking like this one. Again, uh, this Mission Valley Stadium site, as we all know famously, the home of the Chargers prior to their departure here from San Diego. But now it's going to be the permanent home of the San Diego State University Aztecs. Of course, they'll be building a stadium amongst other things here. But it wasn't until Measure G was passed by voters back in November of 2018, nearly two years ago, that they won the rights to negotiate with the city. And it took nearly two years to get those negotiations underway, to get a deal in place, and then finally for escrow to close just last week. And so this deal was for more than $80 million, this passage of land from the city here over to SDSU. And of course, as we all know, the city wanted uh, to get this sold. It was costing them nearly a million dollars a month uh, to have this, uh, basically this land in their possession. Uh, so now this is obviously going to SDSU. And once demolition and construction starts, SDSU will build a multi-use stadium. They'll also build classrooms, research buildings, housing, and even retail shops. They imagine this looking vastly different than it does now. Now, Councilwoman and mayoral candidate Barbara Bree was a big proponent of Measure G and eventually uh, this project. She wrote that about today's groundbreaking, saying in part, quote, San Diegans contributed millions of dollars to support the campaign for Measure G. And after Measure G was approved by voters, supporters kept the pressure on elected officials to do the right thing and consummate the sale. Now, when we spoke with Councilmember Barbara Bree, uh, a uh, not too long ago, but about those negotiations, she said that she wanted the best deal for taxpayers to be in place, and she felt that the deal that passed was, in fact, the best one for taxpayers. And so taxpayers can watch the groundbreaking, essentially, uh, that ceremony here uh, for the passage of this deal and for the taking over by SDSU for, their, for them to begin this project. You can watch that virtually happening at 10.30 a.m. Go to CBS8.com and click on the story link for how to watch. Eric Stella. That area going to look a lot different soon. All right, thanks, Chris. Markets opened a short time ago. Let's get a check on our money. Diane King Hall live inside the CBS Broadcast Center. The first time we've been able to say that for a long <laughs> time. Good to see you back months. in there. I know. The first time in months, Eric. It is good to be back in here. So you're right. Trading has been underway for a little less than 10 minutes, and you got some choppy action out the gate. The Dow's been flip-flopping in early trade. It was positive, then it turned negative. Right now, it's barely got its head above water. Uh, you got the NASDAQ with a stronger gain. S&P 500 pretty uh, flat as well, but a, a gain of about 10 points right now. Markets really just don't have a lot to hang their hat on right now. Meantime, the U.S. is linking payments for COVID-19 vaccines to certain milestones. For instance, in a recently announced deal with Moderna, federal agencies negotiated a payment sliding scale. According to public filings, the biotech will receive its full one point $5 billion payout if its vaccine obtains regulatory approval by January 31st of next year. If the company doesn't hit that milestone, then it receives $1.2 billion. TikTok catches a break from the Trump administration. On Friday, President Trump issued an executive order giving ByteDance, the app's parent company, 90 days to either sell or spin off its U.S. division. The new order also requires ByteDance to destroy all U.S. user data by mid-November upon a sale of the division. Uber and Lyft are threatening to suspend service in California this week. On Thursday, a new state law takes effect that requires them to treat most drivers as employees instead of independent contractors. Uber and Lyft have both said they won't be able to comply with the new rules immediately. Last week, a judge denied their request for more time. And pepperoni is the latest commodity in short supply because of the coronavirus. Prices for the cured sausages have shot up 50% this summer. In fact, some pizza shop owners say 
At times, they haven't been able to find any to buy. Eric? Might have to uh, make the switch over to Italian sausage or just find some new toppings for a little while. I guess so. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm or okay with that. Or maybe try out veggie lovers. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Go after the veggie. Now's the time. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. Really yeah. appreciate it. Have a great rest of your Monday. All right. We are getting ready for a big day tomorrow as News 8 collaborates with the Red Cross to host our annual celebration of heroes, blood, and food drive. And it's all to honor the first responders and blood donors who helped save the life of News 8's Kyle Kraska. Joining us now with a preview of tomorrow's big event at Pachanga Arena is American Red Cross CEO Sean Mahoney. Sean, great to see you. I miss seeing you here in person at the studio. Good to talk to you, Eric. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about this blood drive. It's just so important, but even more important during this COVID-19 era. It's, it's a big deal for us. These drives have been so so uh, important to the American Red Cross and to the community. Uh, so far, Kyle Kraska's drives have been promoted by News 8, have, have uh, resulted in 1,000 donations, uh, saving up to 3,000 lives. Wow. And we expect to save more lives tomorrow. So it'll be from 8 in the morning till 8 in the evening tomorrow at the Tonga Arena. And I'm looking forward to, to giving blood and, well, along with 150 other people in a safe environment. So you mentioned it, safe environment, but things are a little different. The process is a little different here. So what steps can these donors expect to see during this blood drive? Well, it, it's it's amazing that the Pachanga Arena has, has allowed us to use the facility. Uh, and it, it provides that space down on the floor where you normally you see the hockey, hockey right. games or, or concerts. So it's really wide open. Um, when people come in, they get their temperature checked. Everything's been disinfected and sanitized. Uh, the seats are six feet apart when they're waiting to donate. Uh, the beds are far apart. All our phlebotomists have gloves. Uh, there's hand sanitizer. So it's 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 very safe, controlled environment, uh, and and it's a, really the perfect location for us. Is there anything that the people can do beforehand to kind of help out or speed up the process? Yeah, what they can do is they can they can download the uh, the the blood donor app, the American Red Cross blood donor app, and make their appointment. These are by appointments only. Tomorrow's appointments are, are filled up, which is amazing, 150 appointments. Uh, and they're by appointment only to provide for that social distancing. And then they can do a rapid pass online, which answers some of the questions you get from the app when you come in in advance. Well, the, the, the appointments for the blood are filled up, but people can still help out with the food drive. There's, there's like a combo deal that we're doing here on this one. It is. The San Diego Food Bank is partnering with us. So you can you can bring in your cans. I got a can right here. You can bring in your your cans and donate those or your non perishable food items, uh, and 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 help the community that way as well. So they'll be out in the parking lot collecting those. Or if you didn't get a chance to sign up for this drive, you can go to RedCrossBlood.org or your your Red Cross donor app and sign up for another uh, donation. The, so these blood products, Sean, that are collected from this drive, are, are they going to go to help a specific type of patients? Do you guys know exactly where they're going to go? They'll go wherever they're needed most. So uh, it, it can be a, a newborn that has had kidney failure or uh, a child that has sickle cell disease and maybe had 70 blood transfusions in their lifetime, people with leukemia, cancer, trauma victims. Uh, people need blood uh, every day, so it's very, very important. It's always nice to see Kyle. You see him in the video walking around there, kind of shaking hands. Well, now he'll be a little more distant, but he'll be down there smiling, waving. Um, and what else can we expect to see down there? Like you said, 150 spots already filled, but people can still help out. Uh, they could show up, they could donate food, but they can also donate blood in, in, in different parts of town, too. Yeah, absolutely. They can they can sign up at redcrossblood.org. It's really, you know, it just takes takes about an hour to donate blood. The actual donation of the blood part takes about eight minutes. Uh, and really, it's it, you're, you're helping up to three people, saving up to three lives. So it's something people can do at no cost. It gets them out of the house, someplace a little more interesting than their four walls. Right. Uh, and it really helps. Yeah, it certainly does. It goes a long way, doesn't it? As you said, thousands of lives saved. We still have work to go, though, right, Sean? We do, but you know we owe so much to Kyle. He, he he's amazing. He's a he's a ball of energy, and he's so passionate about about blood donation and thanking the first responders that saved his life. We appreciate his passion. We appreciate your passion, Sean. Thanks for everything you do, and I hope it's going to be a great event. I know it will be one a great one to Thanks, thanks, thanks Sean. Sir. Appreciate, appreciate it. your time here. Let's get it over to Stella now. 
Yeah, as we know, it uh, saved Kyle's life as well. So whatever you can do, it really helps the community. Blood, giving blood is so important. Coming up next, stay prepared for the high temperatures. It's going to be another hot week. What to expect for this new week? We're tracking the forecast for you. And Jenny horses around in the South Bay as she takes us to Ponyland.